Hi everybody, um, here I am for the weekly call. Um, I'm actually sharing this one more widely as well, so you may well be watching this from within Patreon, or you might be watching it on YouTube, maybe through my newsletter, because um, I thought this week it was such a relevant topic to so many people that I wanted to share it more widely. And so the topic we're looking at is um, relationships, but specifically relationships where we feel like we can't, um, we can't speak up, we can't say what we're really thinking, we can't give our perspective or opinion. And maybe that's because we think um, the other won't hear it in various ways. They might just ignore us, they might um, have a counter argument and always convince us of their way, or they might just be really angry and, um, and either dismiss us or, um, or create some kind of argument. And so for all these reasons, we, we can end up holding back and not speaking up and not saying what we're really thinking. And so I wanted to talk today about why, therefore, these relationships are gifts to us and where the freedom is available within this experience. So um, just so you know, if you're not in the membership, this is the kind of, I'll do like a little reflection each week. This week is a bit more fancy um, because I'm actually at my desk and I'm going to share you some uh, an image that I came up with to talk about this. Often I'm kind of just chilling in my chair and doing a little um, ramble for <laughs> a few minutes about a theme that's come up in my life for the week or a theme that I've seen playing out for clients in the week and sharing thoughts and reflections on that. So today, um, as I say, here out at my desk, um, I will be sharing a couple of images. And I also wanted to start with this quote um, because this kind of <laughs> sums up the whole thing really. Um, and of course, I'm gonna talk about this specifically in relation to those relationships, but yeah, this, this, this is it. This is, this is the truth of everything that's going on. So it's from Jack Pransky. And I'm actually reading it from my friend's book called From the Heart which if you'd like to get it, uh, profits go to charity. So it's all for a good cause. So Jack says, all we are is peace, love and wisdom and the power to create the illusion that we're not. All we are is peace, love and wisdom and the power to create the illusion that we're not. That's it. That's all that's ever going on. So whenever it looks like there's something going on that isn't peaceful, loving or wise, it's purely because there's a creation, uh, an activity of thought going on that makes it look like that's not what's happening. So I'm going to expand on that quote a bit with the general mechanism of what's going on all the time with any situation when it looks bad. And then through that, I'll kind of I'll pull out um, the role of these difficult relationships with us, perhaps using some of my own experiences. So let me share the screen here. So I've created this, um, this little picture um, to talk about the experience of whirlpools. So for those of you who know my work, you know that we talk about um, our experience of life being like a river and that whirlpools can, can appear within that river, um, which represent the confusion of our mind when we think we're a separate individual self, when we think I'm a separate, person here all alone in the world fighting for my place that's fundamentally a whirlpool it's an activity of thought and so we represent that in the river um, to show how if we flow through those whirlpools into life our content of life the experience of life we have is very different than if we just flow purely freely downstream into the content so um so on here then we're we're showing this is Jack's um Jack's quote I've used some slightly different words so with peace love happiness connection wisdom all these lovely words we could use any of them this is who we we are already always always will be that's that's not changing um and from that space the world is as it is we meet the world as it is we work with the world as it is we talk to the world as it is we just speak from that space of purity and clarity and cleanliness there's nothing on it there's it doesn't mean that we're um i guess soft and fluffy might be the phrase we use it doesn't mean we're like hugging everybody all the time it doesn't mean we're um in love with everybody in that way in the traditional way the mind would think 
It doesn't mean we're always saying lovely things to other people. It is also the space of some very clear and very direct communication, um, and which is heard so clearly by the other when we're speaking here, from here as this. But then, as we saw in Jack's quote, we have the capacity to create the illusion that we're not this. We have a creative capacity in the mind, which creates the idea of a me, a construct in the mind of a me who comes with all these associated stories of how I am and what I'm like and what I deserve and what I can do and all that stuff. So I'm representing that our little whirlpools here, this little squiggle. So a whirlpool forms within the river of life that we are. Who you are forgets its essential nature. You've created that illusion that you're not peace, love, happiness, and connection. I say you've created it. You, the ultimate you has. You, little human you here, no, you haven't done that. So who you are forgets its essential nature. Its own activity of whirlpooling creates the appearance of a separate Helen here. And immediately, I believe I'm a separate Helen, there is fear. That's just the nature of it. There is insecurity and there is fear. So I feel afraid, lost, confused, unpeaceful. And the mind will now start telling me lots of stories saying, well, this is bad. This is a problem. This isn't good. This isn't how it should be. Which is true. There's a, there's a definite truth in that, that your nature is this. So it's definitely right that it's there's something different available. But the difference here is that the mind is, is in resistance to its own activity. It, it's saying this whirlpool's just been created. I'm an activity of thought. And this whirlpool's just been created. And now that there's another whirlpool being created saying, and it shouldn't be like this. So there's a feeling of fear. And then there's an extra layer of, oh, and now there's judgment about the fact there shouldn't be fear it should be different it shouldn't be like this and from that place with that viewfinder over the vision of the world the world now looks like a problem it looks like there's something wrong out there so first of all there's something wrong with me and now there's something wrong with the world and because we've been taught to fix and solve we now go into fixing and solving so there's a problem with me, there's a problem out there. I need to fix me, I need to fix the world. Then I'll feel better. We've been taught this. We've been taught that if I could just do that better, if I could just fix myself better, if I could just fix the world better, then I'd be okay. Then I'd be back to feeling peaceful, lovely, happy, connected. And again, there's a truth in this. There's a knowing that there's a, there's a better way of feeling. There's a knowing that this isn't really who I am. And that's very cool. That's like the, it's like glimmers of light from here. They're always piercing through saying, no, you're really okay. Like you really are peace, love and happiness. And anyway, so we go into this fixing mind and we try and fix ourselves and fix the world. And we can do that for years and years, trying different strategies and approaches and self-development techniques. We can even just try it for a day. Whatever it is, because it, it happens on the micro and the macro, this happens on all levels. But let's take a micro example. So we're in this confusion of believing with a separate self. We've been feeling lost and afraid. The world's been looking like a problem. We've now set about trying to fix that. But eventually, something will give up. Either the mind will just collapse under the weight of its own activity. Those whirlpools will kind of... Um, yeah, the energy of the whirlpool will just disappear. It's like it, it can't be maintained any longer. Or it will just naturally settle down. The whirlpool just will dissipate, will appear, dissipate, appear, dissipate. So sometimes it will just go. Or sometimes there's an insight. Sometimes there is some fresh water that comes straight downstream, either bursting through the whirlpools or bypassing them completely. We might call that an insight or a realisation where we go, oh, Oh, of course, I've been believing this and it's not true. Of course I could do that. Of course that would change the situation. Something where it's not the mind setting about trying to change. It's so fresh and clear. 
so obvious, so perfect. It's just, yeah, this is the right thing to do. That's the space from which change actually happens. And so the whirlpool goes, and now we're back as we, as who we are, as, as who we've always been. It just, we got lost for a while while we went on this journey. We forgot who we were and created the illusion that we weren't peace, love, happiness, and connection. And at any point along here, there can be those bursts of light that come through that show us the confusion that's going on, that invite us to check the truth of whatever it is we're believing. All the way at the very start here, the fact we're believing ourselves to be a separate being, we can absolutely inquire into that to check the truth of that. And all the way along, we can check, is it really true? Is it really true? Is it really true? All of those are bursts of light that start to limit the, not limit, that start to dissolve the convincingness of these narratives, these illusions that make it look like we're not already okay. So let's bring this into the experience of a person who feels um, they can't talk to another, they can't speak up to another. Now, if you've ever been in that situation, there might be a couple of things you've noticed. Um, one, which is very common, is the is the retreat, the sense of, of shutting down, going inward, thinking, I can't say this, I can't speak up. I can't speak my mind. I can't tell them what I'm thinking. They'll take it the wrong way. They'll react. They'll be upset. They'll shout at me. Fundamentally, we're saying we're scared of being hurt. We're scared that if they do that, I can't handle it. If they do that, I don't like it. I don't like that feeling of being hurt by being, of being rejected by somebody, of being shouted at. It goes right back to childhood where we didn't like being told off. Of course we didn't. And the feeling of that was horrible. And so of course, unless that's been understood and inquired into, we're gonna carry that with us as an adult. So, um, so yes, yeah, so we're in this experience with this other person. We're likely to have retreated and be keeping ourselves head below the parapet, not gonna say anything. I'm just gonna try and avoid it. I'm gonna try and keep my head down. I'm gonna not provoke them. I'm gonna try and say the right words and do the right things so that appease, 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 keep them calm, keep them from getting upset with me. And all of that is staying in this area of illusion and idea of self, because there's created a complete separation between you and me, which is always the sign that we're in the mind. The minute we're into an idea of, I'm like this, they're like that, I can't do this, they're gonna do that. If I do this, what if they do that? It's all separation, it's all ideas, it's all conceptual constructs, creating this distance and this, yeah, just separation, this, this seeming disconnection, this seeming danger. All of it, all of it, all of it is signs of being caught up in the mind caught up in ideas, caught up in concepts. And another sign will be that we start analyzing. We start um, trying to figure it out. So we, we, we start to think, well, ooh, um, what if I did this? I wonder if that would work to change something. Or what if I did that? And, oh, they've, they've sent me this. I've got routes A and B. Which one's gonna be the safest route? Which one's gonna, ensure I stay okay? Which one's gonna make sure they don't get cross so that I'm not hurt? Again, all signs that we're off in this illusion of the mind because we're trying to figure it out. We're trying to do it right. We're trying to protect this idea of self from being hurt. All of it, all of it, therefore evidence that I'm lost and confused. I'm not in contact with reality. I'm not peace, love, happiness, and connection, seeing the world as it is, being with the world as it is. I'm completely off in ideas, ideas about me, ideas about them, ideas about 
what will keep me safe, ideas about how I can say this, ideas about what reaction I might get. How could we ever know? Maybe and check this for yourself right now. Think of times where you've said something that you thought you were going to get a certain reaction from somebody else to, and you didn't. Think of times where you've tried to second guess or you've tried to come up with the right way to deal with something. But then in the moment, something completely different came out of your mouth and it was perfect. Think of times when, um, well, I guess the opposite's happened. You've perhaps, you've analysed and you've tried to figure out and you've tried to do the right thing and then you've got a reaction back. It's like you thought you'd got it right, you thought you'd nailed it, you thought you'd got the right words and the right tone of voice and the right um, timing, and then you still got a reaction. So see how we, we have no idea. When we're in ideas, <laughs> we have no idea what right is. We have no idea what is the thing to say or do in this situation. When we are being who we are, absolutely amazing things come out of our mouths and movements of the body and actions taken. No ideas needed, no conceptual ideas needed. And so the gift of relationships is that when we're in a situation like this, we can see that the discomfort of this figuring out, analysing, how do I do it right, isn't telling you about what you should do or, or anything about their behaviour or what they might do. All it's telling you is that you're in the mind trying to figure it out, trying to get it right, trying to stay safe, trying to protect this idea of self. And so the invitation is then to, to get curious and understand. Get curious about things like I've just said, you know, look at all the times where it's, it's just not, there's not been a rule that's worked. There's not been a step-by-step, step, if I do X, Y, and Z, then it will work out. See how there's just, there is no, um, there's, there's not enough capacity within the mind to come up with enough rules, enough algorithms to get it right in those kind of situations. And, and then, so as well as that, so as well as seeing that we can't get it right from this space of the mind, we can start to inquire into it. So we can start to inquire into the fact um, it, doesn't, it doesn't feel good. It doesn't feel like my nature. Who am I really underneath all of this activity? What is it that is being believed that makes it feel so awful when I'm in these circumstances? Is that true? Is it true that um, feeling afraid, lost, confused, unpeaceful is bad? Is it true that I can't handle that? Is it true that I'll be overwhelmed by it or that I'll be hurt or damaged by it? Is that true? Is it true that the world's a problem? How could we say that? How could we know that how somebody's behaving is a problem? If it's happening, it's happening. Does it help to call it a problem? Does that benefit us in some way? Or does it actually just serve to add to confusion? Mind trying to fix what's happening so you feel better. Is that true? Does, does an attempt to fix and analyze and second guess, does that actually help you feel better? Do you get the lasting result from that that the mind is telling you you will get? Or is it just you get a temporary relief because you perhaps avoid this situation in this moment only for it then to come back again? Because that's what I've seen happens. These things do come back again and again until we start to get curious about all of this that's going on and start to inquire into it for ourselves to see it as illusion, to see that isn't as things actually are, to see that isn't who I am. Because in seeing through all of this, as with all illusions, the minute you've seen through it, all you're left with is what's reality. All that's left behind is what isn't illusion. 
And in my experience, and I'd love you to tell me if you find different, but in my experience, when we drop out of illusions, all that's left is peace, love, happiness, connection. And the world is perfect as it is. From there, who knows what you might do or say? What I've seen is that it gets much clearer, much cleaner. You make a bigger difference in the world because you're working with it as it is, not via ideas. So I'll stop there because there's been quite a lot in that today. Um, I'll stop sharing. I'd love to know what, um, what you've heard in this, what's resonated, what hasn't. Where does it look like? These relationships in your life perhaps aren't a gift still. <clears throat> so get curious about the fact they are gifts, that the discomfort of them is trying to point you back to all that activity of the mind. It's trying to get you to inquire into that activity of the mind. But if it doesn't look like that, then do get in touch and, um, and let me know what's going on for you. I'd love to uh, have that conversation with you. Lots of love. Take care. Bye.